Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show how to apply some corrective anatomy to your shoulder and clavicle rigs. Uh, let me show you what I have. So this is my shoulder control and this is the result I get when I try to raise my shoulder. All right now, if you notice, there's this swooping arc here and even though it's sort of like a cool deformation it's not really representative of what uh, happens when you raise your shoulder like this All right. so when you raise your shoulder or you do a shoulder shrug you should be getting something like this so if you look at this you should be getting a straight angle of the clavicle, right? Like this bit specific image, show you like this straight angle. Let me get my proper pen. Like this from the manubrium to the acromion process over there, right? Let me see some other examples. Right there, this is a good one, right? This is the, the clavicle, the part of the clavicle closest to the manubrium and it needs to go straight all the way to the acromion process over here. So that swoop is not uh, really good if you want the character's anatomy to look more human-like. Now, the problem arises in, in the first place because of the pivot of my shoulder joint. So I put my pivot over there. I didn't want the shoulder joint to compete with the chest and the base of the neck uh, during the waiting process, right? If I put it at the correct place, this would have been a little messy. The result it would have returned for waiting would have been a little messy, right? So that's why it's there. But for whatever reason, if you put your clavicle anywhere other than where it's supposed to be pivoting from, uh, this uh, is how we're gonna fix it. We're gonna use blend shapes, right? And while we're at it, I'm also gonna fix this, right? Her top. This deformation that's happening here is not ideal right when you raise the shoulder you should be getting a straighter shape something closer to this right if you raise your shoulder this thing should be taunt it should be like this like so it should be coming down like this i don't know why i'm using this pen i should use a darker one that's separate yeah so it should be more taunt so this is also another corrective morph i'm gonna do Okay, so let's get started. Usually when you're doing corrective morphs, or at least the way I learned how to do it, you usually want an intermediary um, mesh that pipes all your uh, blend shapes uh, to the main mesh. You can apply blend shapes directly to the, uh, your, main, your main body mesh, but mine has so many deformers, from sculpt deformers trying to hold volume and a whole bunch of wrap deformers and you can very quickly end up with all these deformers and then you have to go try to process how uh, the input order for these deformers so that uh, they behave correctly right so it can get really hairy so it's nice to pipe all deformations that you have uh, through one sort of blend shape here right and because of my uh, delta blend shape feature it can be a, it can be a very clean to do it this way because you don't need a whole bunch of meshes like the way i have here over here you see me using blend shapes for the head the old school way there's still an intermediary mesh that pipes all these blend shapes to the main mesh but with delta blend shapes i really didn't need all these i could have just done all those blend shapes directly on this but that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna apply the blend shape directly on here and it's gonna pipe through because this has a blend shape uh, that's connected to the main body. I'm gonna show you how I did it by just simply doing it for the top, All right? So I start by duplicating the top, All right? And it's only skin wrapped to the body so I can move it and I don't have to do any unlocking. Typically, with the body, it's skin to the joint system. So you see 
all the transfer rooms are locked. So after duplicating it, I would have had to unlock all these so I can move it, but we don't need to do it for the uh, bra because it's just skin wrapped. So I'm gonna shift P to take that out. All right, and just call it blend shape. I'll do a short, short version of that. Just let it sit here. And because I want to see how it's going to work over the fixed shoulder, well, actually it doesn't matter. I think I can position it anywhere. We're gonna look here to see what the changes are doing. So I'm just gonna position it actually on the side here. It will be suitable, or maybe over here. So, all right, and then I'm gonna select, ooh, I made a mistake, sorry. I do have to zero this out okay, to make sure I'm getting a nice clean. So I duplicate that, shift B, do a B shape, and shape. Okay. Move it to the side. and then connect it back to its source by selecting it, uh, the source. I'm gonna use this as a target. I'm gonna go into my blend shape, uh, my shape editor. You can also access the shape editor through Windows, uh, animation editors, shape editors right there. So I'm just gonna click over here, open it. These are all my blend shapes for this rig, okay. so. I can create this directly from here, or you can also go to the deform menu. So with the target, what I want to be my target selected and my main selected, I'm going to go to deform and shape. I'll use the default settings, call it draw master DSHP and go create. Okay. There it is. I'm going to rename a target. RGT okay. and we're ready but we're not gonna start there we're gonna start with the body fixing this so I can pose this now I have some keyframes set that trigger it so I'll probably use that instead just raise it like this and I'll start with this one so this one I already created one of these for it it's inside here, I think I called it the yeah body blend shapes. So that's its master blend shape, and this is one corrective morph I did. I'll talk about it another in another tutorial. But let's focus on a new one. So the new one is going to be I'm going to create a blend shape, and I'm going to call it. Uh, use the same naming convention BSHP. Uh, clavicle corrective anatomy zero one. Then add a target to it, and I'll call the target. I like to use the same name, so like that. Go T R G T, and this is going to be for the left side. When we're done, I'm going to duplicate and flip it to create the other one on the other side. Okay, so with the target created, edit is on. So that means any modifications are gonna be stored as a delta morph, All right? So I can minimize this window. We'll go back to it when, um, if I need to turn it off, All right? So to start, this feels a little unintuitive. Well, I don't even know if that's the word, but this feels not so Right, but if you have both windows open, you can see what you're doing and you can get some good results. So let me start by selecting the face, the face on here. And I'm gonna attempt, so this right now, I have the soft selection tool active. You do that by hitting the B key. So I have it active, but the region of influence is too much. I don't need all that. Right, or maybe I should. No, I don't. Okay. So this is about a good region of influence. If you keep, 
in order to make sure I contain the movement here, I can just select, I can reduce the region of influence by holding down the B key and sliding my left mouse button like this. But I can add more faces like this so that I can sort of contain my movement here. Let me start with an initial move and see what it does. Another thing I'm going to do is I want to move perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to hold down the D key and click on the face and then it will let the manipulator move perpendicular to the surface and start moving it and let's see in this window the impact it's having. So I'll try that here too and move it. Okay, so I start to get this more anatomically correct shape. In this instance, I'm going to select the edge and do it with the edge. You can do the same thing with the edge. Hold on the D key, click on the edge, and then it's perpendicular. Right, so it's looking okay. I'm going to select the vertex this time. I'm sure, you can do it with almost. You can do it with all component types. So there. So it doesn't matter what you're seeing here. This might look just ridiculous, but it's what it's doing over there. So move this and I think this is fairly good. Keep moving these vertices up to get a good uh, final result. But even if I didn't get a good final result, I always come back and make modifications as I'm animating if I decide that it doesn't look as good as it should look. And really this mesh this model uses a displacement map at render time to do subdivision but in order to see a better result i can hit the three key and get uh dynamic smoothing All right so go back here keep tweaking and make sure no that's not the point i want i want this one okay and i think yeah i think i want to stop right there so that looks about good. Okay. It's fairly straight. All right. And it looks pretty nice. All right. So that's done. All right. So I'm going to go back or, and even if it isn't, I can always go back and fix it as I said before. So this is good. And I'm going to turn off edit and then I'm going to duplicate it and then flip target and now that corrective morph would also be on the other side I should have this right this is the right side we'll deal with this later for now let me deactivate this okay so now let's i'm going to do the bra right so i'm going to minimize this temporarily since we're finished with it and i'm going to select the target of the bra And I'm going to add create a blend shape. Okay. And I'm going to follow my same name convention for the actual target. This is a master. So this would be BSHP. Uh, I should give it like the same. Oh, yeah, clavicle uh, corrective. Since I'm going to use it in conjunction with it, but I should probably it's an anatomy bra. So I know that it's for that one. All right. Add a target. Let's call it TRGT. Okay. So. There it goes. And it's edit is on. So I can start making modifications. So again, I want it to be taunt. So I'm gonna go to the face, go over here and see what oh one thing I did forget to do is like I said, we need a live connection from this target to that. So this master always needs to be on. Now I think that's snapped into place. It's no longer Raptor forming because of the input order. That was something I forgot to change. So you have to click on the source, go to all inputs. And I think this blend shape is supposed to be underneath the Raptor former. 
yeah, so that it processes before the wrap deformer. All right, that's always something you have to do when you connect. Always make sure the blend shapes are underneath the skin clusters and underneath the wrap deformers. Okay, so now the master is active, so I can and our corrective is editable. The delta blend shape has edit red right on, so I'll minimize this and I'll start. I'll go to face, and I'll start moving this to get. Uh, the result, the corrective result. Okay. Again, we want a taunt looking result. So, soft selection on. Doesn't matter what it looks like in this view on the right side. Only matters what it's looking like in the main window. This isn't looking as taunt as I want it. So, looking a little wobbly. So, I'm definitely going to have to fix that. Move these points to see who is going to straight it as best. Yeah, let me start using vertices. like this vertex at this point I have to go with more granular regions so I can do some better shaping all this uh, averaging yeah like that so I can fix these little kinks I don't want these messed up kinks and I think this should suffice and come like this well now I might need to go a little higher Get a larger region of selection and pull it out and come here. Okay, this is where maybe I need to reduce the radius so I can get more granular selections. There we go. And then this portion, I feel like it maybe could use a more granular selection right up on top of it. We have this. No, not that. But that point, and that should help straighten it out. And let me see which point needs there. So it's getting, yeah, it looks a little bit more taut. And I'm going to move this out so we don't get too much penetration. Let me see what it looks like from the side. Yeah, this side here, I don't like it. So, yeah, you can really adjust all this just so it looks perfect in every angle you don't want any weak deformations so that's pretty cool so that's that looks pretty taunt this looks like it's swooping and it really should be have, have feel like it has that forceful line like has a lot of has force applied to it so I want a straight break. I'm going to reduce the region of influence because I'm starting to get some weird kinks. Right. And in the event that it starts to look a little too crooked, another thing you could use is the smooth brush. You have two different smooths. You have the morph target smooth, which will smooth all the changes you've made. Right, so it kind of right, and you also have this sculpting smooth, which will actually smooth. It might obliterate some of your modeling, so that one you want to be careful with. But in this case, I do want it because there's a little kink here that I don't like. So it's this one, in the under the sculpt tab, and it's gonna be stronger. And if you don't like the settings, double click on it and. Here I've already reduced the strength a little bit, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to my self selection. It's done a good job, but of doing some smoothing. But I think this is a simpler fix. So I'll go to my vertex. It's just one vertex position that it's not that one. It's the one underneath it. Okay, and the region of influence is too much. I just need this small region to just straighten up just a little. 
like there. Here, now that I have this, I'm going to increase the region of influence. Oh, I think it might be good. Oh, look, I messed it up. All that freeform movement messed it up in this angle. So, so I should be really, should have only moved in one uh, axis. I'm going to increase this to get that straightness back and reduce it. Yeah, this is like a whole re-sculpting process. But the great thing is you only have to do it once and you have some nice results. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this. I think this is good. All right. And do it for the back too. Yep, I'm going to do it for the back. So grab this, increase the region of influence, and this time I'm gonna move one axis. Well, there's a lot more work to do here, so we really have to do big, broad movements to get this to be taunt. Pull out. And then. Now, all of this work is going to be triggered at a specific uh, with a specific action. So uh, we're going to get to that shortly. Let me get this. Okay. So now it's time to go back and do those granular move granular moves to make sure that. It doesn't look crooked and messed up. I can turn on this move, but sometimes that could be misleading. It could force you to not do such a good job. Even in this faceted state, you should be able to get some nice, uh, clean deformation. So it's best to stay in here for as long as you can. You get really close, and in order to check to see what the end result looks like you go to the smooth the dynamic smoothing all right let me get this top area looks like yep we're getting close it's all about there is it travels along the back it has some good distortion there I suppose yeah but even this top area here now that's not necessary but I could we could add here it's a little bit straighter now I think it's fine because it's tucked in between the neck and the deltoid and it's fine for it to swoop that way and get distorted that way let's focus on the back here Good enough down here. Oh, you reduce the radius to get more granular movement adjustment. Okay, and I think this is good. Yep, that's good. Taunt. You know what? This should be closer to the neck. Just a little, I think. Maybe I might have moved the wrong point. Let me see. Increase the radius. Yeah, just a little bit. Looking a little crooked. So it's... And the way it's misbehaving is also because maybe the raptor former is having a more difficult time processing in that little space over there. But I want to get it as clean as possible. There we go. That was the move that I needed to get like somewhat of a clean result. Okay. So yeah, I think that's enough. I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit. And that should be fine. 
all right so if i hit three it should really smooth and tell me what the end result is going to be okay so now i see it's a little just a little wobbly on the back side let me see if i can make some changes just to make it feel straighter yeah right there and then somewhere down here no not there somewhere down here yeah right there just nice alignment nice straight taunt just so you can feel the force in the straight pull okay so i think that's good i would probably actually there's a little bit more work to be done but i think i should move well let me let's do it anyway so you can see what the nice clean end result is but i'm feeling like this should taper more as it gets to this place where it's compressed in this tight region all right which is between the neck and the and the in the deltoid so i'm going to make more granular movements just to straighten it out it's really like old school 3d modeling sculpting in uh, with vertices but like i said before i like the idea that you really only have to do this once and then you forever have nice deformation that you can trigger i think that's good enough i'm going to stop here because this video will be too long That should be good so that's the taunt pull of the bra as i did before i'm going to duplicate it uh, turn edit off because we're done with this then i'm going to duplicate the target and flip it flip target and this would be the i thought i put a right this is supposed to be left and the other side is right so that's the other side I'm gonna release it right now we need to focus on this side okay so this is good let me look at now the value of the shoulder control when I move it so at around a translation of five is where I want it to to be triggered to, I want these blend shapes that I just created to be triggered right so it's about five so I'll probably stick with a value of 5.4 is what I'll enter to trigger okay anyway let's start the triggering process I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to turn it off so turn both of them off the one for the bra and the one for the uh, body I'm going to open my set driven key window okay so set driven key window can be found here set in the animation sub menu under key and set driven key set and the driver is the is the shoulder control so I'm going to load it as the driver and I am looking for translate Y to be my driver and the blend shapes to get them into the set driven key window I have to select the the mask the parent blend shape in the uh, shape editor and the same over here and I go right click and I go select blend shape node so when I do load driven it pumps both of them in here okay and I should see my right and left I'm only interested in left right now I'm gonna set a key at the zero state here so key It should let you know it's done it with this blue tick on the blend shape and i'm also going to do it for the bra so for the left side of the bra key it's there and then when the shoulder control is at around 5.4 i want it to be fully triggered so i'm going to go over here set the blend shape to one I should trigger there. Q. 
key and then set the blend shape of the body to one and key so that's it let's see what it looks like right there so yeah it's fixed and then if i do like this it leaves it alone and as i trigger i get a nice clavicle anatomy and then the bra handle looks straight looks like it's pulling okay so in the back too that looks pretty nice all right all right so that's it this is supposed to be a short tutorial i hope it didn't last too long if this was helpful let me know in the comment section and i'll create more 